We all know some of the bigger animals that live in ponds, like fish, frogs, ducks and insects. But there's much more life in a pond that meets the eye until we look through a microscope. Looking at pond water with a microscope reveals an entirely new world of tiny living creatures. But to find these microscopic organisms, we have to search in the water. So let's go beneath the surface and explore the micro world in a pond. Even though fish can be rather large, their eggs are not. This tiny fish egg is only about 1 to 2 millimeters in size and inside is a living embryo. When a fish hatches from its egg, it is referred to as a fish larva. These larvae don't have any scales and are not able to feed by themselves yet. So they carry around the yolk sac, which they snag on as a food supply for the first few days of their lives. Here, you are able to see the beating heart of a newly hatched fish larva, continuously pumping red blood cells through the entire body of the little fish to keep it alive. When the fish larva grows larger and is able to feed by itself, a small crustacean is likely to be on the menu. This type of crustacean is commonly known as a water flea, and this specific one is called a simocephalus if you're fancy. These animals are filter feeders and feed on bacteria and other small particles suspended in the water. If you look closely, you are able to see a tiny beating heart in the back of the water flea through its transparent gel. When a water flea reproduces, it develops eggs inside of its shell. These eggs hatch after a day or two, but the babies stay inside of their mother's shell for protection for another couple of days. When the time is right, the mother contracts its body, allowing the tiny water fleas to exit through an opening in the shell and into the world where they will spend the rest of their lives trying not to be eaten. This is another type of crustacean called a cyclops. It is called so because it only has one eye and therefore share the same name as the one-eyed giants from Greek mythology. The cyclops doesn't keep its eggs under its shell, but in egg sacs that it carries along with it. Not only is this one carrying two egg sacs, but its entire body is also covered in single-celled hitchhikers called Borgicella. After a few days, these eggs hatch and out come small cyclops larvae. The newborn crustaceans don't just have to watch out for fish to avoid being eaten. Another predator that loves to feed on tiny crustaceans is the hydra. These tiny octopus-like organisms are only about 10 mm long when fully grown, but even though they are tiny, their tentacles carry a sinister secret weapon. The hydra's tentacles are covered in stinging cells called nematocysts. These cells contain a dart and a nerve toxin. When a tentacle encounters a meal, the darts fire into the prey and injects the toxin which paralyzes the victim immediately. The hydra then slowly curls the other tentacles around the prey and brings it towards its mouth to be eaten, sometimes while still alive. This one has just paralyzed a newborn cyclops and is about to eat it. An even smaller organism living and reproducing in a pond is one of the smallest animals in the world, the rotifer. Here you can see a large group of rotifers swimming around an island of their own eggs, almost like they are taking care of them. Being one of the smallest animals on the planet, life in a pond can sometimes feel like riding a scooter on the highway. This rotifer is surrounded by flatworms and crustaceans, which look like giants compared to the microscopic creature. Some of the smaller things buzzing around the little rotifer are actually smaller rotifers, along with single cell organisms and bacteria. Rotifers are on average less than half a millimeter in size, but not all rotifers are that small though. This one looks like a giant spaceship compared to the other ones. Sadly, not all animals get to reproduce. This rotifer died while it was pregnant, and is now being eaten from the inside by tiny scavengers. Inside the rotifer, you are still able to see the undelivered egg. 
When an organism dies, the nutrients in its body is recycled by other organisms. Here, a group of flatworms are having the time of their lives with a water flea family dinner. Some animals even turn to cannibalism to acquire the necessary nutrients to survive. These two insect larvae are munching on the third dead larva of the same species. One of them even tries to take a bite out of the other one. This tardigrade is also filled with single-celled scavengers, eating the dead animal from the inside. Tardigrades can under certain circumstances survive almost anything, but when they go about living their normal lives, they die after a maximum of two years. When they die, the nutrients in their bodies are recycled by other microorganisms as well. These organisms then go on to be food for other larger animals, maybe even a tardigrade, in the circle of life that Mufasa taught Simba about a long time ago. This cute little fellow is a tiny freshwater snail, no more than 2 mm in size. Snails are extremely important to the ecosystem in a pond, as they eat a lot of the stuff that other animals leave behind, such as their feces, as well as rotting plants and other decaying material. They serve as garbage men on a microscopic scale and help to decompose organic material so it can be recycled and used as building blocks for life once again. If you want your name listed here and help me make more and better videos, you can support me on patreon.com and I will put a link to that down in the description. If you have any questions or ideas to what you want to see under the microscope in the future, please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching.